welcome back as we join the National Anthem. We've got an exciting atmosphere here at Golden West College. Let's send it down poolside to our deck reporter, Nick. I was walking around down on the poolside before the game, and I had a chance to watch both of the teams warm up. Golden West looks like they're firing on all cylinders. Long Beach City looks a little lackadaisical. I did have a chance to talk to Long Beach City's coach, and Reed will be starting in the goal for them. That could, this could be a problem for Golden West because he's been – stopping pretty much everything that's been thrown at him. Back over, back over to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Nick Dupre. Well, John, this has got to be one of the best atmospheres we've seen here for a water polo game. They've brought in some extra bleachers to accommodate all the fans here. And as you mentioned, Long Beach, just a few miles away, bringing their fans as well. We expect a spirited atmosphere, both in the pool and on the deck. Yes, and travel distance is not a problem today. Uh, Long Beach, probably 10 miles to our northwest. And if you stayed off the freeway, you'd get there sooner. They brought a good crowd. Their team is fired up and ready to go. The wrestlers are certainly going to be prepared. So we will begin with Long Beach to our left, attacking to the right. And these two teams got here through pool play that started on Thursday. The six top, top teams in the state divided into two brackets. Uh, West Valley was the number one seed in the north. Long Beach, number two, and Santa Rosa, number three. Long Beach prevailed in the semifinal game against West Valley by one goal, 12-11 yesterday. Golden West went through their bracket against Diablo Valley and Riverside, winning comfortably by four or five goals in both contests to bring us to this championship game that's about to begin. We have a little bit of a disadvantage up on the roof from whence we broadcast. There are shades over the fans to keep the clouds off of their head or the intermittent sunshine. So we have a blind spot to our lower right. We will give you as much coverage as we can. Both teams look quite relaxed out there in the pool, John. I know they've got a job to do, but um, this isn't the type of excitement that you would see in sort of a football game where all they got to do is amp themselves up for a big game. They're very calm, very relaxed, very composed. And yeah, the swimming athlete is cut from a slightly different cloth than the football athlete, but you're never going to see a sport any more physical than men's water polo. Uh, everything that goes on below the surface of the water leaves a little bit to be desired by the specter. We can see from up here, and here we go. The ball drop here, Dusan Ivanovsky for Long Beach, Rex Learmouth for Golden West. Meet right at the middle, but Learmouth grabs the ball, and Golden West will begin the game with possession. It's always good to get that first ball that gives you one more possession in the quarter than your opponent. McKibben at about the midway point of the pool. There is a shot clock in water polo. It resets at 25 when there is a shot good regardless. Co good coverage here by Long Beach. McKibben unable to find anybody, but a quick shot. My goodness. And it's Nate Castillo from deep in middle of pool territory to Take get the that. opening goal with just 30 seconds gone. Golden West jumping out to an early 1-0 lead. There's five seconds on the shot clock. He rose up from mid pool. The goalie perhaps was blocked by a defender. First goal. What a shot by Castillo. 
And here is our first look at the Vikings offense. I, Scott Butler on the ball. I expect this game to be nip and tuck. Both squads have scored goals all year. They are, at this point, the two best teams in the state. There's the hole. And the shot just over from Yanko Jovanovic. Yeah, all day long, you will see both squads try to get the ball into that person in the hole or the pit, uh, as we occasionally call it. And the things that go on there or underwater are very interesting. As long as the ball's not there, those two men can pretty much dance as physically as they want. Hurley found himself wide open. Now over to Winston Newland. Played into the pit to Venner. Comes back out to Castillo, and Castillo again tries the deep shot. That one skips just wide of the goal. Goalie Duran Reed for Long Beach will get things started up. Passing up to Scott Butler. Nick Castillo is a six foot six inch, six inch sophomore out of Newport High School. An extremely strong water polo program on the high school level. Foul called against Learmouth. This one against Newland. Blocked well. Points and in goal for Golden West has racked up save after save in this tournament so far. And you, you'll hear a single whistle all day long. The single whistle is what they call a minor violation. Play continues, but they do keep track of those violations. Winston Newland that passes over to Hurley. That's a pass to the weak side. Two whistles will be a kick out against the Long Beach player. Golden West with a six on five swimming advantage. See if they can take advantage. Here's Learmouth over to McKibben. The uh, offending player is out for 25 seconds or until a shot is taken. Newland to Learmouth on the near side. Finds the far corner of the goal. Gives Golden West a 2-0 advantage here. 5.39 left in the first quarter. Well, that's certainly the start that Coach Scott Taylor was looking for from the wrestlers. Now they have to keep the pressure on, play that tenacious defense. What you have is a one-on-one -on -one all over the pool. Both teams have six. They team up or pair up and cover one another at both ends of the pool one-on-one. -on -one. And there is a lot of physical contact. Good defense here by the wrestlers. Vikings unable to find very many open men near the pool. Shot clock at 13. Here's Ivanovsky. Dumped okay. into the middle, but good defense. And Jovanovic is smothered by a couple wrestlers. And the Golden West wrestlers will take over. And the player with the ball is fair bait. And in that case, three Golden West players physically put hands on him. And that's fine as long as they don't punch or elbow. Hurley passes over to McKibben. McKibben is fouled. If you have the opportunity and you're watching this, every now and then look away from the ball at the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Pass dumped into Matt Venner, but Duran Reed was quick to come out and grab the ball. And it looks like Looks like a kick Better. out, a kick out against Golden West. There was some physical activity that the officials saw. Six on five here for the Vikings. See if they can capitalize here. Mishandled there by Ivanovsky. The offensive team tries to force the defense to overplay the ball when they're a man short. That's Great save by Robbie Poynton. Bender had just come back into the play. Long Beach unable to capitalize on their first man advantage situation here. And that was the perfect shot for Long Beach, and the defender happened to be swimming in the right place to deflect right, the ball. Minor violation, play goes on. Just halfway through the first quarter here. Exclusion yet again. Kick out. Official indicates that the defender crawled on the shoulders of the offensive player, offensive player. So Jovanovic will rest for about 25 seconds here as Golden West looks to extend their lead. Still sitting on a two goal lead. Here's Hurley from deep and it's good. Three unanswered goals to start this first quarter here in the state championship game. And the wrestlers looking quite dominant here early on. Just three, 36 left in the first quarter of play. No lead is too big in water polo. I've seen, we've seen teams come back from four and five goals down late in the game. 
So I'm sure that the wrestlers will keep the pressure on. From every moment of the game. Scott Butler drawing the foul. Left-handed shot right through the hands of Robbie Poynton. And Long Beach answers here with 3.23 left in the first quarter. Now trailing 3-1. That was a rocket. It's a good thing that ball didn't hit the goalie in the face. Learmouth, the leading scorer so far in the tournament. Foul. foul dumps it into Mc to Nate Castillo. Castillo gives it up and fouls. So Long Beach will take over possession here. Looking for the swimmer. Right at breaking down the field. Even Somebody Oski needs to cut him off. Getting into the goal. Great save by Point. Great save. Ball pops out. And uh, almost a breakaway. Seabury wasn't able to pick up that ball quick enough. Another great save by Poynton. And it's a race over to the corner. And the referee judges Castillo to have been fouled. So Golden West will take over possession here. And the goalie is pretty much like a quarter. He didn't know the ball was there. Great play by the Long Beach goalie. Duran Reed coming way out. Steal the ball from Rex Learmouth. It was thrown just over his head. Learman, I don't believe, knew the ball was there. The goalie acts as a quarterback and tries to get the ball as far up the pool as possible for the offensive play. Ball played on the near side here for Long Beach. Long Beach has the ball out quite a ways. Now they bring it in. Aggressive defending by Newland. Shot well wide of the cage, and it's just over two minutes left here in the first quarter. Golden West still leading three to one. We'll, we'll see that skip shot more today. They try to throw the ball so it hits in front of the goalie and bounces over his arm. Quick shot, what a save by Reed. Colin yeah. McKibben on the shot. The yeah, rebound comes all the way out. Long Beach breakaway. Jovanovic is breaking up the pool here. However, some Golden West defenders were able to recover. Skip shot comes off the bar and Poynton's arm. Long Beach will maintain possession. Awesome. Offensive foul called against Long Beach. Golden West will take over possession. That long pass again. Learmouth now with the ball on the far side of the pool. He's fouled. He's got Seabury right in the middle of the pool. Here's Castillo with a big left-handed shot. Skipped just over the bar. I don't know if the goalie got a hand on that or not, but it certainly skipped high and over the net. Duran Reed, the goalie out of Long Beach Poly High School, he's playing for Long Beach City College. Coming up with a few big saves here to keep them in it. Still trailing by two. Here's Butler. Over to Yunovsky, back to Butler. Into the pit. And Jovanovic is fouled. There's an exclusion on McKibben. Golden wants to play her down. Under a minute here in the first quarter. Long, Long Beach. Beach working the ball around. Looking for that Off opening. the bar and out. Golden West has what's called a lively pool. That ball takes high bounces. Water is water everywhere, but Golden West pool, that's the third very high bounce we've seen. Perhaps the players using all their muscles here today in the state championship game. I'm sure they're a bit pumped up. They certainly have every right to be. They are playing to be the best team in the state of California in a sport that has played very well in the state of California. Almost stolen there by Yanko Jovanovic. However, a foul is called against him. A few seconds left on the shot clock, and a floater oh. goes <laughs> far side of the goal. Kevin Hurley getting his first goal of the game, and Long Golden West extends their lead back up to three. 4-1 with just 17 seconds left in the first quarter. I hope the camera picked that up. Kevin turned around and is still, he's still smiling. Here we go, a replay. If we get a chance, we'll replay that goal. Perhaps later. That was a lob shot over the goalie who just couldn't get that high out of the water. Vikings have just a few 10 seconds here left in the quarter to get another goal. Lobbed into the pit. Into the hole. Smothering defense by Rex Learmouth. Foul is called. Three seconds left. Shot saved by Poynton, and he'll hang on to it. 
And that does it for quarter number one. Golden West up four to one. Crowd rises to their feet in appreciation of the effort that the Rusters have put out here so far today. Goalie Robert Poynton, Robbie Poynton, has gotten off to a great start. He's blocked almost everything so far. An exciting start to the game today. Golden West jumping out three unanswered points. Let's send it down poolside to Nick. Just about everything. He's only had one mistake where the ball went straight through his hands. That's it from over here. Back over to you guys. Indeed, Robbie Poynton, just one error, if we can barely call it that. It was a rocket of a shot, went right through his hands to give Long Beach their only goal of the first quarter. Well, and Long Beach is a very fine team or they would not be in this game. Again, they beat uh, West Valley yesterday in a one point match to qualify to play in this game and they didn't get here to be second. They're gonna play hard. They're gonna give Golden West everything they've got. Hopefully, the trend will continue. The wrestlers have gotten off to a very, very fine start, 4-1. Some beautiful goals here by the wrestlers. The lob shot, the opening goal by Nate Castillo from practically at the midpoint of the pool to get things started. And that kind of set the tone here for the wrestlers in the championship game. And Nate caught everybody by surprise except himself. I don't believe the goalie ever saw that ball. He certainly didn't respond to it. Probably somebody's head was blocking his view. And here we go for the second wave, 25 seconds till the second period begins. The wrestlers are lined up and ready. They certainly bring, are. Learmouth, bring, bring it on. Learmouth ready to go for his second sprint of the contest. We'll try and beat out. Before Sasa, Ranislavich. Well, Ranislavich beats the heck out of him last name. We'll see who swims the fastest. Learmouth gets off to a good jump here. Ball is dropped, and Learmouth will comfortably get to this one and easily pass it over to Winston Newland. Ball yeah. over now to Kyle McKibben. Looking for some more goals here. Over to Castillo. Castillo is fouled. Usually that swim off's a little closer than that. That was a real whooping. But they have to capitalize. That gives you one more opportunity at the ball than your opponent when you win the swim off. McKibben is open, looking for the shot. Great save by Reed, knocks it just over the bar. Golden West will maintain possession here over in the far corner at the two meter line. Well, Duane, Duane Reed has done a pretty good job in that goal so far, or the game would be out of hand. Steele back over to Learmouth. Learmouth is fouled. That shot reset the shot clock, so Golden West has some time. Offensive foul called against Venner there in the hole. Long Beach will take over possession. And they break up the pool rather quickly, but Reed plays the easy ball up to Scott Butler, who takes it up pool. Smothering defense here by the Rustlers, giving no open player for Butler to pass to. In the past when we've seen this kind of swarming defense by Golden West, teams have reverted to taking the long shot. Uh, we'll see if Long Beach does that same thing. Sloppy pass there by Brian Hogg. Takes a lot of time off the shot clock. And an offensive foul against Branislavich. And Golden West will take over possession. Now we know because we watched the Golden West team from the first day they begin aiming at the state championship, day number one. And this is what they've been aiming at all year. Other teams, I think, prepare for their next opponent. Golden West historically has been the best team in the nation in community college, water polo. This fine squad certainly is living up to that rep reputation. There's Learmouth looking for Venner. He's wide open in the hole. Pops up, back out to Learmouth. Crowd is surprised he didn't take the shot there. Uh, he was double teamed. One second on the shot clock. And Learmouth just has to dump that ball into the corner and Golden West recovers defensively. That looked like a sure goal. And the defensive, Long Beach defense did a great job of getting back on the ball. Shot from outside, just as we were just talking about that smothering defense. No open players for Daniel Lunga to 
find there, and he is forced to take the shot. And Pointon smothers that one easily. I'm sure Coach Taylor wants his men to keep firing on the goal. This is no time to go into neutral. Winston Millen is fouled. Passes it back out to Castillo. This one deep into Venner. An exclusion is called. Venner was wrestled there in the middle of the pool there, and it's Scott Butler who will be excluded here. Looks like a timeout. Uh, I haven't seen an indication by the official. Yellow card is shown to Coach Chris Oding as he questioned the call there that excluded Scott Butler. Chris Oding is the was the 2006 Coach of the Year as he took his Long Beach City College squads, both the men's and the women's, triumphant in the state championship. And here they are again today. He's got both squads in the finals here today. He's going to be a busy man today. Yes, and the women are also playing the wrestlers. That will be as interesting as this contest. One of the first times that both Golden West teams are facing the same Long Beach teams for the men's and women's in the state championships. And Golden West has the luxury of having hosted this tournament, and they get the home pool advantage here. But as you mentioned, Long Beach not having to travel far. So um, they've got lots of fans here today. And they've been in this pool on other occasions. And water is water. We happen to think we have a home pool advantage. Golden West gets it started here with a swimmer's advantage. Looking for the open man. Here's Castillo. They work the ball around the outside. That one just dies, but what a sprint by McKibben. New shot clock. Goes back to 35. Castillo over to Learmouth. Learmouth has McKibben here on the near side, but he goes for the shot off the crossbar. And Long Beach back at full strength here. 5.15 left in the half. Golden West still sitting on a 4-1 lead. Vying for their second consecutive state championship title. And that's two uh, scoring opportunities in a row that the wrestlers have missed. You can't miss too many opportunities during the course of a game. Given call for the foul yet again. Thought he might have had that one, but he's called for the foul. Somebody's out. And it's number 10, A.J. Bialik. Long Beach looking for the man advantage to try and gain some momentum here, and they're going to call time out here. John, we want to mention today is quite a historic day in terms of Golden West athletics. We've got Golden West hosting the state championships. Men are playing. The women are playing, both vying for the state title. We've got men's soccer in a playoff game going to be held at 2 o'clock today right over there on the Golden West campus. And then for the first time in many, many years. 34 years. 34 years, the football team will be playing a bowl game tonight at Labard Stadium at Orange Coast College. And we're going to do the best we can to cover all of those events. Uh, we made our original commitment to water polo before we knew that the soccer team would be in the playoffs or the football team would get a bowl. Actually, the bowl game we didn't find out about until after last week's, last Saturday night's game, uh, when Orange Coast got knocked off by Long Beach City and the wrestlers won a very important game against San Diego Southwestern. So our commitment was to water polo, but we will have ca coverage with sportscasters and cameras at those other two events and cover them as best we can. And when we finish this contest, most of us are getting in the car and heading for Labarde. That football team has won our hearts, and we want to see them beat Ventura in the Orange County Bowl. Now it has some other names, but I can remember the Orange County Bowl. Here we go. Back in the action here in the men's water polo. They look for that opening. Long Beach moving the ball around very close to the goal here. And a little crowded right in front of Robbie Poynton. Shot, what a goal to the far corner. Dusan Ivanovsky. Now half the lead here 
two point advantage for the wrestlers. 434 left in the half. Golden West unable to point any points on the board here in this quarter. Now this is the last game for both squads, so there's no no reason to hold anything back for tomorrow. Benner with a backhand and that's in. in. That floats in. What a backhand from Matt Venner. We may want to point out here that because it's this, the championship game, we have four officials. Two are actually sitting on the goal line and are able to call that, which would have been a difficult call for the officials with just a two-man crew. That is a judge. That is a judgment call, and there's no instant replay in water polo. The official has to get it right, whatever he calls. Shot is high from Brian Hogg. Fast break. Quick, quick break here for Newland. And the defender is in no man's land. Newland pops up. Great play. Off that, the that's head a breed. That's using your head. <laughs> Great play. The Long Beach goalie has certainly come to play today. That's three shots that just as easily could have gone in. Whistle on the deck. The officials are discussing something. Oh, there's an extra ball in the pool down by the Golden West goal. There we go. When the officials want things to stop, they just call for the ball. And you know what? You can't play without the ball. Golden West with a full shot clock here. Working the ball around. Oh, uh, long shot from Venner. Long and high. It looked a little off balance there in the pool. <laughs> and Long Beach will take over. Probably searching for the bottom, which happens to be eight and a half feet right there. He's not going to find it. Again, if you're watching this game and you can see the play away from the ball, it's pretty physical most of the time. One defender is trying to take advantage of the offender as much as he can. Eight seconds on the shot clock. It's a pretty soft shot there from Hogg. Pointon is easily able to grab that one and get things started offensively for the wrestlers. Pass up to Learmouth. And I don't believe the defenders know how they, oh, they turn around. Bennard, or pardon me, Newland didn't quite read that play. Yeah, that was good defensive play. The Long Beach player just swam right over the Golden West player, which they can do as long as they don't hit him or hit him with the elbow. No punching unless the referee's not looking. Here's McDonald. Long pass. Butler's able to grab it. Finds Ivanovsky. Back to Butler. Just 10 seconds on the shot clock. Skip shot. Save by Poynton. That ball is coming off the water really hard. Of course, these young men throw the ball really hard. Here's Newland. Over to McKibben. McKibben can't handle that one very quickly. And he was ahead of his defender. That's what his teammates were trying to tell him. Get the ball to the person that's unguarded. Castillo. Over to Newland. Newland with the shot. Looked like it went off. Went off of somebody. Venner. Might even have been a Golden West player. It looked like it did go off of Matt Venner, so Long Beach will maintain possession here. Not many substitutions so far for the Rustlers today. They're keeping a pretty even squad here. Well, you can see who the coaches feel are the strongest players. We're, like we say, there's no tomorrow for either squad. Poynton unable to put that one, stop that one, and it's Daniel Lunga who gets his first goal of the game for Long Beach. They still trail by two, 5-3, with just under two minutes left in the half. Now we get some substitutions on the Long Beach side. Golden West keeping with their six players. Water polo athletes are amazing. These guys were swimming for an hour before this game started, and they may not do it today. But Pass we'll into see what happens here. Learmouth. Learmouth is fouled. Minor foul. The offended player cannot shoot. He must pass the ball. Sends it out to Newland. They run the cross right in the middle. Nobody open. Newland still with the ball. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. They're trying to run a play where the outside man breaks. 
Shot is just wide. Now that's that's four or five potential goals that the wrestlers have missed. That cannot continue or success will not occur. Tight defense yet again from the wrestlers. Butler unable to find any open players. Quick shot, Poynton was quick to cover it. Shot from Ivanovsky. One minute left here in the half. Be nice to see the wrestlers get another goal and build a bit of a cushion. They've got two goal lead right now. Long Beach has certainly come alive here in this second quarter, putting up two goals. Only allowing wrestlers to score one here. Here's Castillo with the ball after the foul. 40 seconds remaining in the first uh, in the first half. McKibben thought to go for right the shot, couldn't handle it. Good save yet again by Reed. Brought his right arm up, blocked the shot. That came from Colin McKibben, and Golden West will maintain possession here. 36 seconds left in the half. Fresh shot clock at 35. And the best players in the pool to this point have been the goalies for both squads. There's Castillo over to McKibben. We have 30 seconds remaining in quarter number two. Rusters need to work the ball in and get a shot. Castillo asking for McKibben to just control the ball. Let's, let's maintain possession here and get the final shot of the half. Newland back to Castillo back to Newland just 10 on the, on the shot clock Newland rises shot saved by Reed six seconds left in the half and it looks like Long Beach will just hang on to it oh they're gonna get a shot at it it's a soft one comes from Dusan Ivanovsky and midway through the championship game it's wrestlers up 5-3 let's send it down to Nick Dupre at the end of the second quarter, the score is 5-3, to three, Golden West up against Long Beach City. Uh, Matt Venters has the goal of the game so far with his reverse throw-in. And um, also, Golden West has been dominating the sprints, winning both of them so far this game. Back over to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Nick. Golden West known for their sprinter's ability, getting to nearly every sprint we've ever seen. That well, and that gives you one more offensive opportunity, but I, I'm a little concerned about the last five efforts. Um, we'd expect at least half of those to be in the net. It's made it, made it a much closer contest at this point than I thought it might be. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back for the second half after these messages. No matter where you live, life in the ocean depends on you. <laughs> to help protect our ocean, recycle and dispose of your trash properly. <laughs> to learn what you can do, go to keepoceansclean.org. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Every day, California goes to work. And thanks to its system of more than 100 community colleges all across the state, every day, California becomes a better place to live. California Community Colleges, the way California works. It just gets better and better. action here. Welcome back to the state championship game being held here at Golden West Aquatic Facility. And Golden West sitting on a two-goal lead heading into halftime here. 
John, we've got a game on our hands. Uh, yes, we do. And uh, the Long Beach team started out a little flat. They got over that in a hurry. Golden West scored immediately. Long Beach has come back to make it a two-goal game at this point. We're a long ways away from determining who's going to be the men's state champion today. Some exciting play here in the pool. Long Beach certainly not going away, putting up a big fight here. And even though they've lost five times this season to Golden West, they feel that they can do it today. Well, and we said earlier, it's, it's very hard. Both coaches will tell you it's very hard to defeat a team just continually when they're as closely matched as, as these two squads. Uh, coming into this game, it really is a toss-up game. They both had to beat other folks to get here. Uh, and Long Beach has shown up, and they're continuing to play. Both squads have a half left in this season. They have a long time to think about the winning, and the loser has a long time to think about the losing. We've talked a little bit about the dominance of the Golden West program. Scott Taylor now in his ninth season here for Golden West. What has he done to bring back the, the consistency for Golden West in the men's water polo team? Well, the first thing he did, the first thing he did was uh, hire Ken Hamsdorf, the former head coach, as his assistant. And up until last year, Ken worked with the program. He's here today, he was filming a little earlier. Uh, certainly looks a little more relaxed than we've seen him the last several years. But uh, the Golden West teams, as far back as I can remember, and I coached against Golden West in football in the 70s, the Golden West water polo team was looking at the state championship game day one of practice. That mentality has continued today, and we would consider this a rebuilding year in most programs because of the number of quality players that were here last year for the championship year. Golden West just reloads. They put new folks in the same position. They play very well, and they're in this championship game, and they didn't come here to finish second. We talked a little bit of early in our first game that we covered about how Golden West usually likes to recruit from all over the world. A very local team this year, and that's probably helped in bringing this crowd. we got a lot of friends and family here from all the players. But we're ready here for the second half sprint. Here we go. Quarter number three. Learmouth yet again snags the ball after the sprint. He's three for three on the afternoon. And they switched ends here at the pool. It's always good to, to get that ball. You get one more offensive chance. Learmouth is fouled. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Ball way outside, right at mid-pool. Castillo over to Newland. Seabury making a break for the far corner. Five seconds. Newland is fouled. Just three on the shot clock. He has to let it go. Just over the bar. That's blocked twice. Long Beach ball. Duran Reed getting things started up for Long Beach. Here's even up. Excuse me, Evenovsky. The ball's in our blind spot right now. Now it comes back out. I'll play it cross pool to Lunga. Lunga's fouled. Just 10 on the shot clock here for Long Beach. Like the hog. Into oh. the pit. Learmouth recovers, passes it back to Poynton. Point and snags it. And he'll get things started offensively with a pass to McKibben. Long Beach didn't have much pattern in mind on that particular offensive set. The whole man was out of the middle. Ball was just thrown into the front of the goalie. Hurley goes to the far side of the pool to Learman. Golden West has an open man. Now he's covered. Here's Hurley to McKibben. Castillo. Five on the shot clock. Castillo can't get the ball in his arm, and he's called for an offensive foul. Golden West will have to recover defensively here. You can expect this half to be more physical than the first half. They're running out of time. Scott Butler passes up to Ivanovsky. Ivanovsky is fouled. So it's a minor foul. Play continues. Offended player cannot shoot. Iwanowski goes Weak cross, side, cross pool to Brian Hogg. Somebody's out. Looks 
Classic, Richie Seabury. It's interesting, that player can go to the penalty area any way he wants. He chooses to swim right in front of the defense and stop shots on the way. Long Beach working the ball around with a man advantage. Quick pass right into the hole, and it's Janko Jovanovic who rises and puts away the goal. Long Beach now trails by just one. And that was well played. They found the soft spot, got the ball in there, no defender in front of the ball. The wrestlers need to start scoring some goals. Only we're able to get one little, in the second quarter. A little excuse me elbow to the face. Castillo may have gotten away with that one on Dusan Ivanovsky. Into the venter. Kick out. So Scott Butler will take a little bit of a rest. Golden West with a man advantage here. They try and work the ball around. Here's Hurley over to, back to Hurley. Golden West moving the ball very quickly. McKibben to Castillo. Newland dumps it in. What a block. Oh, boy. Long Beach is staying in this contest on defense. They have just blocked every shot. That's six in a row. Learmouth unable to convert with the man advantage. Golden West with just a one goal lead here. And Long Beach starts a play. Ivanovsky with the ball. Over to Hogg. Foul called on Learmouth. That one blocked. Didn't even get to point and blocked yeah. by Newland. Field player blocks the ball. Go to West back on offense. Rex Learmouth getting things started here for Golden West. Looking for their first goal in quite a while here. Their first goal of the second half. Here's Hurley. Dumps it into Venner. Venner's fouled. Shot All to score. Right. All right. Kevin Hurley All right. for the second goal of the game. With four minutes left in the third quarter. Pushes the lead back up to two here for Golden West. Yeah, and this, this year's squad has shown an ability to score goals in bunches. Let's take another look at this Kevin Hurley goal. Rises up. I guess we're not going to see that. Play continues. Long Beach's ball. Here we go. Let us just tell you that it was an excellent shot. Well scored. There's Berman with the ball for Long Beach. Passes over to Ivanovsky. Ivanovsky hangs onto it. Vanislavich. Back to Ivanovsky. There are designed plays in water polo, and from up here we can see the pattern every now and then, and there's also a lot of freelance. Great defending by Castillo. Pardon me, John, as Golden West looks to break here. Steele dribbling up. He's got Colin McKibben on the far side of the pool. And the whole man is, well, he's covered now. He was open and then he was double teamed, which means somebody else is uncovered. Hurley looking for an open player. Finds McKibben. Doesn't advance the ball too much. Here's Learmouth. Learmouth is fouled. Here's McKibben. Into the hole. Dumps it into Venner, but a called for an offensive foul. Turns the ball over to Long Beach. Three minutes left in the third quarter. Golden West still sitting on a 6-4 lead. Oh, almost. Almost. Ivanovsky keeps it alive. Here's Berman. Back to Ivanovsky. Playing he's, catch he's here on the near side. He's to shoot from that spot. He's got a pretty good angle. Ivanovsky rises, but is fouled by Hurley. Ivanovsky with the skip shot. Goes just wide of Poynton's goal. As physically a game as water polo is, the players have a lot of respect for each other. Once it's over, it's over. Every now and then you see a little grimace, but uh, these guys know they're in for a battle, and it is a battle. Here's Hurley for the Rustlers to McKibben. Trying to find Venner, but Venner is well covered there in the hole. Castillo back over to McKibben. 
Five on the shot clock here for McKibben. It goes to Castillo. They're going to have to get a shot off real quick. McKibben lobs it just oh. by <laughs> looking to her. An instant repeat of that first half goal. But that one went just wide of the cage. A and foot a wide. Timeout is called by Long Beach. A foot wide. Great idea. Wrong direction. So Long Beach calls their second timeout of the contest. Just one remaining. Golden West has two timeouts left. We've got a minute 52 left in the third quarter. Golden West sitting on a two-point lead. And right on the far side, we've got head coach for football, Nick Mitchell, checking out the action here at the Golden West Aquatic Center. Well, these teams, uh, we've seen them support each other. I did a volleyball game on Wednesday night, and the football team came in after practice and lended their support to the ladies. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. They didn't win, but the guys were there cheering for them, and we see that every time we go to a game here at Golden West. A tight-knit athletic community. Must be enjoying this fall sports season, as we mentioned. A very successful one as far as... Anyone can remember the most successful fall season in Golden West history. We're proud to be bringing you the contest here on the Rustler Game of the Week. This broadcast being brought to you by the students enrolled at Golden West College in the broadcast and video department. And we couldn't have asked for a better situation than to have to pick and choose which playoff games to attend to. Yeah, there are a lot of schools that don't have anything to do today. We don't have that. Started here at 9 o'clock this morning. These two games back to back starting at 12. Soccer just across the field at 2. We'll be able to see them from here. We won't know what's going on. And then 6 o'clock tonight at Labard, the Rustlers football team will play Ventura College in what promises to be a great football game. Here we go. Long Beach looking to get things started again. Head coach Chris Oding for the Vikings. Looks like he had some plays involved here. But a good save by Poynton on the near side here. Extends his arm. Lots of pressure here by Vikings. Makes him a little bit vulnerable here defensively. Hurley trying to get things started. Dumps into the, into the pit. Benner is harassed. Oh, that was great defense. Pardon me, that wasn't Benner, it was McKibben. Had his cap nearly ripped off. That was great defense. They had three men around that ball, which could have been an easy goal. State title game really heating up here in the third quarter. Minute to go, quarter number three. Both squads playing like this is the end of it, which, by the way, it is. Tomorrow they can rest. Monday, they'll probably work out again. Here's Hurley. Over to Learmouth. You can hear Poynton shouting. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Here's Castillo at mid pool. Long Beach not letting up at all. Tenacious, pressuring it at tenacious, every point in the pool. Tenacious defense on Long Beach's part. He's there if Jumped he can just turn Benner. around. Banner couldn't get loose. Shot clock expires. But it looks like there was a foul called against Long Beach, and Golden West will maintain possession. Couldn't tell if it was a goalie, but uh, there's 21 seconds on the shot clock and 21 seconds on the game clock. So they must put those together. They want to give the ball to Golden West out at mid pool. So there was an exclusion there. Lunga will sit for Long Beach, and Golden West has a man advantage here. Plenty of time to work it around and get a good shot. Now 15 left a, in the quarter. This would be a nice one to get, get a bit of a cushion. Castillo, back to McKibben. Learmouth to Castillo. Five in the quarter. Castillo's fouled. He's got to get a quick shot, and he scores! The Big left-handed skip shot from Nate Castillo with one second left in the third quarter. Well, let's take another look at this Castillo goal. Watch this ball come up off the water. All right, let's send it over to our 
Poolside reporter Nick Bray. At the end of the third quarter, the score is now 7-4. to four. Golden West still leading. Um, at the end of the half, we had the, the side change. So now Golden West's um, trying to score with their home crowd in the back of them. That's helped out a lot. I've noticed Duran Reed has been pressured quite a few times. And that's all I've got down here. So back up to you guys. All right, Golden West putting up two goals there in the third quarter to Long Beach's one. Extending their lead back up to three. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back for the fourth and final quarter right after this. Hey, how's it going? Sir, are you okay? What? All oh, this? It's probably nothing. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool. Really. Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. Future. I always pay more than the minimum balance on my credit card. I just opened the education IRA for my kids. I never invest more money than I can lose. My husband and I participate in a 401k plan. I've been thinking about opening a Roth IRA. I just rolled over my 401k into an IRA. Find out more great ways to improve your financial future. Call or visit our website and choose to save. Time is running out on the 09 season. Somebody's going to win. All right, back for the fourth quarter ball drop. Liam with yet again the sprinter. It's been three for three. He'll go against Scott Butler this time. An exciting finish there to the third quarter. Wrestlers snuck in a goal there on the very last second to extend their lead to three. And that's a crucial goal. That gives you a, a little bit of a cushion. Close contest here for the sprint, but Learmouth gets to it yet again. He is perfect on the day four for, for four. sprinting. What a sprinter. And number this, eight, Rex Learmouth. This quarter is going to start physical. And if Long Beach doesn't close the gap, they may back off a little bit. They're physical all over the pool right now. There are six wrestling matches going on. Here's McKibben. Facing pressure from Ryan McDonald. Castillo. Goes near side here to Hurley. Into the hole. And offensive foul call against Matt Venner. Turns the ball over to the Vikings. We've got to make up a three goal deficit here in just seven and a half minutes. The longer we can keep them out of the net, the better it is for Golden West. Butler looking for some teammates here. Here's Ivanovsky. Back to Butler. Butler tries to lob that one over Poynton's head. Poynton had no worries with that shot, was able to easily grab that one. Long Beach is, was running an offensive pattern earlier in the contest, and they've sort of gone away from that. And they're in basketball, you'd say they're standing around. Here's... An excellent shot from Matt Winston Newland, but an even better save from Duran Reed. Goes out over the goal line and will maintain possession here for the wrestlers. Yeah, when the goalie's the last person to touch the ball, it goes out, it goes back to the offensive team, in this case, Golden West. Started up yet again by Learmouth. And I believe the goalie's having a little problem getting his breath. That ball hit him right on the diaphragm. Foul there by Jovanovic on Castillo. Castillo finds Newland here on the near side of the pool. Their defense on this side, the near side, has been a little weak. That defender is playing in towards the hole, which could open up that long shot if the lefties are on this side. 13 seconds on the shot clock into the hole. Venner was West fouled. Ball. Nine seconds. Five seconds on the shot clock, and Golden West is just going to have to throw this one away. Now you see that a few times in a water polo match. They know they don't have time to run a play. They'll just shoot the ball to the corner, eat up some clock. Looked like Learmouth kind of slapped Ivanovsky in the face. No fouls called. You get a feeling these guys aren't going to go out to lunch together after this thing. They've been smacking each other around for the entire contest. 
And they're not stopping yet. That's a good spot to be in. Great defense from Kyle McKibben came from behind Jovanovic. He went from being open to being covered in one swim. Sure, Jovanovic had no idea McKibben was right behind him. He looked ready to Must have been score. another either thrown out of bounds or an offensive foul. We couldn't see it from up here. Long Beach ball. And they are sort of standing around, if you will, like you would say in a in a basketball game. The mo the motion on the Long Beach squad. Now they're getting a little movement into the hole. McDonald, but the shot from yeah. Ivanovsky, well off the mark. Ivanovsky had a great game against West Valley, put four goals in to lead his team in scoring that day and get them into this game today. And that was a game that West Valley was ahead for all but the last 21 seconds. Long Beach scored two quick goals to tie and then take the lead and win the contest and be here right now. Ivanovsky just one goal today. And the Vikings just four on the match. Eight seconds, seven on the shot clock. Newland's going to have to let one go, and he'll just dump this one off. Not that terrible of a tactic here with 4.49 left in the contest. The more clock they eat, as long as they don't allow Long Beach to score. Well, that's the key. I think Coach Taylor is willing to take his time as long as Long Beach is not in the net. I believe if Long Beach scores, you'll see Golden West ramp it up a bit. Scott Butler with the ball. Passes over to Lunga. And Long Beach has become a little bit passive on offense. They're, the players are staying in the same part of the pool rather than crossing like they were earlier. Butler lets the shot go just wide of the mark. Now they're, again, they're doing what we've seen other squads do. The Golden West defense is so tenacious. They resort to the long shot because they can't get a good shot any other way. Although Long Beach has gotten a couple into the hole and scored easily, they need to score several. This one into Venner. What Great a play, play by Reed to come out and Great snag play. that ball from Matt Venner. Venner had no idea that was coming. Win or lose, my player of the game is the Long Beach goalie. He has absolutely played a great game. And there he came way out of the net to take the ball. Caught everybody by surprise. There's Butler to get things going for the Vikings. Under four minutes here in the contest. Still trailing by three. Ivanovski goes far side to Hogg. Hogg's the leading scorer for the Vikings in this state championship tournament. Shot to save. Good save by Poynton. That was on target. Well played by the goalie. Dosses it up to Castillo. 325 remaining in quarter number four. Russell's patient, bringing it up easy. They have a tendency to lull you to sleep and then blow up right in your face. Here's Newland. Cruises in. Cruises That's a back good out. spot to shoot from, but he chooses not to. Learmouth. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Passes over to Hurley. Hurley is fouled. Six seconds on the clock. Pass into Newland. Newland, yet again, dumps this one off in the corner. They just eat up 35 seconds every time they get the ball, and Long Beach is going to have to go to fouling. They're, they just call a timeout, and it wouldn't surprise me to see Long Beach get a little more aggressive and foul the ball. So Long Beach calls its final timeout. Let's send it over to Nick Dupre. With Long, Be with Long Beach City using up their last timeout, I feel like they need to have put the pressure on Golden West more. As you guys have been saying up in the booth, they've been kind of lulling us to sleep. They've been just um, rotating the ball around, not really making any attempts on goal. And with Golden West, they need to attack more, I think. I think they need to maybe put one more up on the board just for some cushion. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Nick, with a slim three-goal cushion, to say the least. Another goal would certainly let the Golden West crowd breathe a little easier and really enjoy these final moments here. However, as it stands with just 2.56 left of the contest, Golden West poised to repeat as champions. Well, and Nick's observations are absolutely correct. The wrestlers are eating up 35 seconds, and Long Beach has laid back and let them do it. But I would suspect with 2 minutes and 56 seconds and after your last time out, Long Beach is going to get pretty aggressive on the ball and maybe force Golden West to move into the offense a little bit more. So 
Coach Taylor knows how to win championships, and he knows he's got to be ahead by one at the end of this thing. He'd much rather get rid of 35 seconds than force the ball and take a shot and give it to Long Beach. Just wanted to give a congratulatory note to these six players. Poynton, McKibben, Hurley, Learmouth, Venner, Newland, and Castillo, who have played, played practically every minute of this contest today. If they go on to win, these players have really led the team today. We've seen in other contests where Golden West has been changing players in and out all game long. But these players have done the lion's share of the work today. We're back in action here at Long, Long Beach. Long Beach has gotten more aggressive in the hole. Foul against Castillo. Great play, great play. Sloppy pass there by Ivanovsky. And alert defense to rise up and steal that ball, keep Long Beach from getting a shot. It'll be interesting to see how far out Golden West keeps the ball now. Here's Newland. Cruises in, unmarked, unchallenged. Here's McKibben. Long Beach is inviting the long shot. They like the ball. Coach Taylor has told his troops, keep that ball away from the net unless you've got the perfect lay-in. Four seconds left on the shot clock, and they dump it into the corner yet again. Another 35. So it may not end up being the prettiest water polo we've seen all season long for these final minutes here, but it's getting the job done. And just another word about the rules. Uh, late in the contest, when the ball is thrown into the corner, the shot clock, or the game clock stops until the other team gets the ball. Harassing defense there by Venner, but he's exclusion. called for the exclusion. And that's too easy Goal. there for Janko Jovanovic. Venner excluded there, and it left a two on one. Here we go, supposed to get the replay. Ball is thrown out by the goalie, so apparently we're not getting the replay. Okay. Golden West ball. Minute 40 remaining. Long Beach needs the ball. Offensive foul called. Long Beach is going to have to take possession very quickly. They kick it back to their goalie, Duran Reed, who gets things started yet again. A minute 28 left in the contest. Long Beach probably won't take a whole lot of time waiting to shoot the ball. Minor foul. Here's Butler. Over to Lunga. Six one-on-ones. Long Beach still has the ball. Foul against Newland. He can shoot from there into the hole. Jovanovic. Foul is called Call against, against Golden West. And the, he passes, and this player can shoot. Pointing with the save off of the shot from Daniel Lunga. So a minute left in the contest. Yeah, the offended player cannot shoot, but he passes to a teammate who, take, who can shoot, and very often they catch the defense unaware. Long Beach is going to have to look for the steal here if they have any hopes of getting two more goals. Most likely, Golden West will try and eat up another 16 seconds that are on the shot clock. Castillo heading all the way back, practically to his own five-meter line. And the clock is stopping on these minor fouls now. 35 seconds remaining. Ball in the corner. Learmouth has possession down there. 30 seconds left in the contest. Learmouth dumps that one into the far corner. The clock will start when the quarterback, when the goalie throws the ball to somebody and his player touches it. The official wants the ball. So a 30 second timeout was called by Long Beach. 28 seconds on the clock. Long Beach's goalie will have the ball at mid pool. He can shoot. Long Beach they usually don't. Long Beach looking for two quick goals here in just 28 seconds to tie this one up. Best defense is needed here by the Rustlers. And he fumbles, and that's two in a row. Eat up seconds. Jovanovic coughs that one up. Castillo takes over possession. That does it. With 14 seconds left in the contest, 
Golden West just has to hang on to it. That's the it. The crowd rising to their feet and applause already. Golden West knows this one's over. Two, one, and it's done. The Golden West wrestlers repeat as state champions. And Scott Taylor's in the pool. Well, if you're not a swimmer, you better get out of the way because everybody's going in. Where's Hamstorf? They may get him. Golden oh. West wrestlers do it again. State championship two years in a row. Uh, this year, not nearly as deep a team as they've had in the past, but those seven players and a couple of substitutions have had a wonderful season. Long Beach did their best. Two goals shy of holding this and, and held the wrestlers to only seven goals in the contest. It's one of their lowest scoring games. And well, they, the first quarter was the difference. Golden West came out and scored a couple right away, set the tone, then Long Beach could never quite close the gap. And the winning by anything is always good. Winning by a couple is even better. Congratulations to Sco Coach Scott Taylor, his staff, and the men who play for the Golden West Rustlers men's water polo team. Let's send it over to Nick Dupre. Nick, your final thoughts. Golden West with another state championship. The mood down on the poolside was very tense for the last couple minutes, but with about 15 seconds left, the crowd and everyone else realized that this one was in the bag. Um, and now that everyone's swimming in the pool, everyone's a little wet and a little happy for another state championship. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much, Nick. So an excellent contest here, an excellent display of strength. And I mentioned it there in the final quarter, those six starters for Golden West hardly saw any change at all. They're the true champions here, but congratulations to the entire team who got them to this point thus far today. Yeah, you're never any better than the people you work against in practice, and every player on that squad has contributed to another state championship. And the older these guys get, the more time those bench players will have played. So congratulations yet again to the Golden West men's water polo team, 2009 state champions. For John McNichols and the entire crew here at the Golden West College Broadcast and Video Department, I'm Rob Frecker. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.